Welcome to The One Inside, an internal family systems podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Sallenberger. On today's podcast, Joan Ryan and I talk about exploring the integration of IFS and the Enneagram. Good morning, Joan. Good morning, Tammy. How are you? I'm well. So um, this is our third um, episode, three of six. And today, so we're, the first one was an introduction to the introduction to the integration of the Enneagram and internal family systems. And then yep. our second episode was about the centers of intelligence. I thought that episode was so good. It was so packed full of great information about the Enneagram and our parts. And so today is our third episode and we're gonna focus on the heart-centered types and um, parts of us that come up around the heart-centered types or maybe parts that might be involved in those types. And then we'll just see what we explore together. We'll explore this together a little bit. How does that we sound? Will. <laughs> we will. And, and I know your usual beginning question is, what do you see out your window? And it's really, really cold here. And there's like a, a little bit of frosting of snow. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, when I think about um, what the last episode, the Centers of Intelligence, uh, what stands out to me the most is how important those three centers are and how much there isn't education about those three centers um, for most of us in our experience. Um, um, I, I love the idea that we're going to break these down. And I want to start us by saying that everybody has all three of these centers. And just because... Uh -oh. <laughs> Hi, Rosie. <laughs> That's like... <laughs> Um, just because you happen to be a heart type, it doesn't mean wow. that you have more emotions than other people. It, it kind of means that you might rely on them a little more. Um, the same way as if you're a head type, it doesn't mean that you have better thinking facility than other types. It just means you rely on them a little more and, and so on. Um, and I want to make that really clear as we talk about the heart types and emotion. Um, I love that, so, Joan. I love the idea of relying on it, right? Because it's like if I'm, so I'm a heart type, I'm a three and I, relying, it's such an interesting word, right? Like I rely on it to give me, can we pause on it for a second? Because I feel like it's like, I rely on that to give me the information. And I often will say, well, I want to do that. And then, and then I'll know, I'll know about that thing because I'll know what I feel. So if I'm trying to make a decision or if I, um, it's like, I will, how do I say this? Like, um, because I rely on my feelings, I rely on my heart. My heart is the one that I rely on to give me the information. That's right. And, and so one of the examples I've used before is, and, and this is a way, if you don't know your type, that you can begin to screen, screen for it. If you have to make an important decision, most of us do some form of thinking, some form of research or pres, you know, preparation of some sort. But then in very three different ways, we have a, a backup system. So yours is, how does my heart feel? Mine as a gut type nine, is my intuition telling me? What is my gut telling me? And a head type is going to say, you know, what is my head telling me? Um, so there's a second layer of reliance is, is what it is behind the thinking process that everybody has. Love That's that. exactly what works um, in my experience. So um, because you're a three, it makes it easier. Let's start with the three. And I think what we're going to do is we'll talk about the focus of attention a little bit. And then we'll talk about what parts we think might be supporting that. So the three is the center of the heart triad, triad being three, and there's three of those um, in the Enneagram. Um, and what being the center means, and if you look at the diagram, there's a, an equilateral triangle in the center of the diagram, three, six, and nine. And some people call those core points. So three is a core point of that triad. It means that the two and the four, the, type, the other two types in the triad are related and have related concerns. So maybe we'll start there with the common concerns across heart types. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit, um, I backed up a little bit here. 
if you're a heart type, emotions play a big role in your life, as you just said. And that doesn't mean that you're necessarily expressing them, um, but it does mean that, you're, that you have some awareness of them and that they're underlying a lot of your decisions and your actions and your behaviors. Um, around those emotions, the, one of the big common concerns is what we call image. And what image means is how am I being perceived by someone else, by the outside world, by the organization, you know, and so on. Um, an awareness of how you're presenting yourself and how you're being received. And the emphasis on this is, is really strong. If you happen to be a two, a three, or a four, you can get this image consciousness in the other types, but it's never gonna be this strong. The other thing that these three types have is an awareness that allows them to create a presentation. So for example, the threes, because they're focused on doing and tasks and goals will um, consciously or unconsciously create an image that fits that project or that progress towards that goal. So it might be the successful businessman or it might be the supermodel or it might be, you know, and like that, but in line with what it is that they're focused on for a goal. And they, um, many threes that I've interviewed have said that they weren't aware that they were doing it, but when we started asking questions about it, they could find that experience in them and it was familiar. Is that true for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I think I, right, it was that, the unconscious habit that I wasn't aware of until, um, right. It's funny. Cause I'm like, it wasn't until I got to know my parts and noticed my parts doing that, like noticing, noticing my managers that needed to fit in and I could fit in. I used to say it was because my parents were divorced that I could fit in anywhere <laughs> because I had to do that. I had these two really drastically different of family lives. Um, and so I always felt that it was these, my parts, like my parts that just knew how to perform and how to act and how to do and how to fit in um, and could do that really well. And then when I heard about the Enneagram and learned about my type, I was like, oh, and so it's sort of, I'm curious, you know, it's, we don't have to talk about this right now, but I'm sort of curious sort of what kind of what comes first, right? The parts of me that learned to do that or, yeah. you know, just that my type, I don't know, coming out. I, I don't know that there's an answer to what comes first, but it, but it is a, it is a looking at it through a positive lens. It is a skill or a uh, or an ability that is more finely uh, tuned in the three than it is in another type, and and a version of this happens in the two, where again, consciously or unconsciously. And my, my experience tells me that it's a little more conscious in twos than maybe in threes um, of uh, shaping themselves, so to speak, um, towards the needs of whoever it is that they're focused on. And usually the person they're focused on, they're being helpful to or supportive of. Yeah. Um, and one of the interesting things you hear from twos when you interview a lot of them um, is that they'll say, um, I have lots of different kinds of friends. Um, and if you put them all in a room together, a lot of them wouldn't get along because they're so different. And I've heard that over and over and over from twos. And my guess is that what happens is they shape the way they present themselves to different people just enough differently to fit in with that person or to meet the need or the expectation of that person. But then when they shift their focus to someone else, it shifts again. So they can get along across this wide spectrum, but the people in the, this wide spectrum can't necessarily adjust like that. Yeah, I love that. And you and you hear the, the like um, genius of parts, right? Like the genius of parts of like the type two that have learned and probably from their family of origin learned to do that in order to survive, in order to function, in order to um, be okay and feel safe and secure. And then learned, probably learned to do that in their family. And I'm just like, wow, our parts are just little geniuses, aren't they? 
They are, and they're very fine tuned. And and I think yeah. you're right. In this realm, in this image realm, are probably managers and protectors who do this, you know, originally out of a survival strategy, um, uh, and then to support the ideas of the t- what the type has come to believe um, is necessary to get along or to get forward in the world. Um, the third type in the triad is the four and image is very important, but here it's a little different. Um, I'm not aware of many fours who will say that they shape their image towards what someone else needs, wants or otherwise, but they do um, indicate an awareness of shaping their image to make an impact. So for a four who tends, type four is, tend to feel um, like outsiders or like misfits a little bit. That's a little strong, but it's somewhat outside. And so they wanna make sure that they're seen. And sometimes um, their managers and protectors um, will cause them to, uh, to present in sort of very dramatic ways. Now that's not always true and not all fours you know, do that. What their managers and protectors are doing, I believe, is trying to get them noticed in some way. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's dramatic. Sometimes it's by you know being different. Um, sometimes it's by uh, favorite forward being unique. Um, and the presentations of image are for that reason. So image is important, as important to four as it is to two and three. It's just utilized by the parts and the type slightly differently. Does that make sense? It totally does. It totally does. And so for the four, you know, that idea of the, you know, being unique. um, And so that the, that's going to be more um, pronounced or more, um, but that's not as, that's not important to me at all, actually, like as a three, it doesn't, I'm not, that's not something that comes up for me as a three, but I, but for a four, um, their image is going to be, what am I trying to say? It's more, um, it has, I think, something to do with, with having an impact or um, getting the attention of other people in a particular way. Yeah, yeah. And um, like maybe and that's how their parts learn to do that. Like their parts that, learn that that's how, you know, like, so for my parts, maybe my parts learned that how I make it, how, um, <clears throat> so the impact isn't going to be as important to me, but sort of how I'm seen or how I'm valued or how I'm loved or accepted or feel safe in the world is to do and to do in a way that is, um, that is something that you would like to, or that you value or something like that, or sort of, to sort of the, be that busy doer. Some kind of a product at the end of it. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 And so the, for the four, it's going to have a, a different twist because it's going to be about being unique and being special and and special in some way. Well, yeah. And, and it's interesting because a a, a very positive component of this is that there tends in many for us, although not all um, to be a sort of fine tuned artistic sensibility or creativity. And you'll see presentations and um, and images um, created by fours um, that you wouldn't see anywhere else. And Mm. and some of can be really interesting and beautiful. Um, so, so the key thing that we want to get across here is that the heart types have this capacity and this um, priority on how they're seen and that we would expect to find parts in all three of them that, that support the importance of this this thing that we call image. I didn't say that well, but um, yeah. Both both Joan and I are a little bit under the weather today. (laughs) Yeah, we both don't feel great. So um, bear with us a little bit. We have parts that are struggling. I certainly do. Um, So how does that relate to the focus of attention? Because um, we said in our episode one, and I think we repeated in episode two, that the primary focus of attention, and each Enneagram type has one, um, is a real key to understanding that type. And I've also said um, often and taught often um, and was taught um, that if the focus of attention is not there, if the individual that we're working with 
does not have that habitual um, and somewhat overriding focus of attention, all other descriptors of the type can be present, but something is off and we should be looking for a core type elsewhere, or there may be some intervening trauma. Um, so it, it's a really clear indicator um, of type. And it's something that um, with beginning or advanced Enneagram students, I often really recommend um, they study. So for you as a three and for the other threes who are listening, this habitual repeated cyclical focus on tasks and goals is the key focus. And you'll find it in all different versions because not all threes are type A business people or anything like that, but they all have the capacity to create a goal, focus on it, create a plan to get there and move through the tasks and steps that are necessary. Um, and if that's not there, then maybe it's not a three, maybe it's a connected point or something else. So we always want to look for that in the three. Now, because we have you as a three, what parts do you find that's that in yourself? Yeah, that's good. Um, <clears throat> well, as you're saying that, you know, thinking of the positives, you know, part of me, feel, I'm feeling proud that I can do that. Right? Part, part of me is like, yeah, I could definitely do that. And the other thing that's coming up for me is like um, that idea that like, can everybody do that? Because that's so easy for me to do that. Like, here's my goal. I'm going to get it done. Um, I can do it. I'm efficient. And I just get stuff done. And I get a lot of stuff done in a day. Like, so um, in part of that, there is an ease and it's just really easy for me to do it. The parts, the parts of me that come up though are the parts that can get, that can feel really intense and I can get hyper-focused on that. So that even though like I'm a therapist, I'm really into people and I love people and I'm good with people. When I get, when a manager comes in and I have a goal or a task, then I don't care. People, probably the only person that I would care about getting in the way of that is my kid. Otherwise, everyone else needs to move out of my way. <laughs> So my managers can just get very like, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is very true. And, you know, the, uh, the common one that, that many Enneagram teachers use is the line that if, if, if you're working with a three or you're interacting with the three and they're on the, on a goal, don't get in the way. Cause if you get in the way, you're going to have footprints right up your back. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard for me to understand, right? Because I'm like, but this has happened to me. Like there's a couple, this has happened to me a couple of times at the grocery store where I'm at the grocery store and I'm like, I've got seven minutes to go from here to here. I need to go to the grocery store. I need to get this one, two, and three. So I'm in there. I'm, I am on task. And then I see someone I'm like, hi, how are you? And I'm like, uh-uh, I can barely be polite. <laughs> and then right. part of me is like, I don't understand what's happening. Like that's, doesn't even make any sense to me. <laughs> well, that's the type. And that's those managers that somehow have decided that, you know, I'm going to make a guess here, um, that getting that task accomplished in that time frame is more important than anything else. And that's how, kind of how this works. Yeah. So and when, when I'm blended with those parts, with, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> no, you go ahead. Yeah. So when I'm really blended with those parts, it's almost, and this is true for all of us. I think when we're blended with a part, we have blinders on. So I'm so blended with that part that that's all I can see is go get the dark chocolate chips, <laughs> the flour and the sugar. And it, and it's, but it's so true of us when we're blended with parts, we do not have perspective and we, we can't see another side. And then we might act in a way that does not make sort of doesn't line up with kind of who we want to be in the world, right? Who I want to be is I want to, and, and often I would stop and talk to my friend I saw in the grocery store. I mean, that's just crazy. But when I'm blended with that part, there's no way. And that, and those parts of me can be very, very strong and very, um, intense. And, and, and here's a place where putting the Enneagram and IFS together, I think could be very useful because I would say from the Enneagram perspective, that the stronger that push to get that task list done, and you know, the grocery store is a great example, the stronger that push that the parts are making, I have to do this now, the more I'm going to be curious about what's going on emotionally 
underneath that this blended situation. So there's what, what Dick would call a trailhead. When that task focus is in overdrive, can we stop and do some IFS protocol and find out, wait a minute, there's something else going on here. Yeah. And I know we've, I've used this example with you so many times because you and I talked one time and I was in the middle of doing that because I was putting the podcast on YouTube and I was tuned in, focused, running around my kitchen. I was going to make this happen and I did it and yay. And you and I talked in the middle of that and you were like, what, what's going on? <laughs> what, what are you feeling? What are you avoiding? And yeah. I didn't even realize, and I was avoiding and feeling something really big, really big. What? <laughs> Yeah, no, no idea. And that's why, you know, so there's a blend here of, of positive and challenging. Um, I, I increasingly don't like the word negative, so I'm going to say challenging. But there's challenge, but there's also, it's also like a big signpost. If you're yeah. trying to work with material and you're trying to work with your parts, okay, guys, you know, can we have a parts meeting here and find out? who is running this manager show and who might be getting drowned out. And, yeah, and that's good. So, um, so for the two, it's going to be similar. And actually I was, um, I did a little bit of a consult with a two um, the other day. So I've got a couple of examples here. It's going to be the same. The focus of attention, if you're a two, is the needs of other people. Oh, you, you as the two can meet them. And one of the things that's interesting about this is that it's a selective process. And the reason I say that is because that's going to delineate it from other types that can, uh, that recognize the, the impulse to be very helpful, um, but they do it for other reasons. So if you're a two, there is some unconscious or sometimes very conscious selection of who it is you're going to jump in to help or who it is you're going to commit to support longer term. Um, some of the examples of twos that, that we see are um, sort of the treasured uh, personal assistant who's doing so much behind the scenes but doesn't really wanna be the spotlight. They wanna be recognized for how much they do but they don't really want to be out front. You know, the, the manager behind the politician, maybe. Yeah. Um, and that can show up in all different kinds of ways. Um, and the parts there are, um, are working, uh, instead of figuring out tasks and goals, they're working to figure out what would be the best way to potentiate this individual, to bring out what they want and what they're able to do. And the superpower, so to speak, in the two is the ability to see that potential in people and in situations where the rest of us wouldn't see it and often where the individual that they're focused on won't see it. Um, the place where sometimes this is a problem is that the two gets really focused on it and doesn't understand if the person that they're trying to help um, resists or pushes back a little bit. Um, so there's a whole interesting group of parts there that, that we might want to talk to when we see a two for, you know, the, the corollary to your example would be a two whose efforts are being rebuffed and how, um, unconsciously and habitually they're going to press, press on and continue to focus on getting this done. Yeah. And when they bring that conscious, they've got a whole set of parts to talk to about why and what they yeah. are. So, yeah. Yeah. And you and I've seen this. My, so my mom's a two and you and I've seen this in a workshop we did where a two um, it is really hard to realize I think that self-observation skill is so important here. It's so hard to realize that the meeting the needs are a, is meeting a need of their own part right? They're so focused on meeting the needs of you. You need my help. I'm helping you and not realizing that actually it's a part of me and it's a, I'm meeting a part's needs. I'm, there's something that's happening for me. I'm meeting, I'm meeting my own needs and doing that. And, and, and that's a great example, Tammy, because if you say that to somebody who is not 
immersed in their own Enneagram and or IFS work there. And this happened in the workshop that you're mentioning. They're going to be, no, this has nothing to do with me Mm -hmm. because I don't know whether that part that has need is an exile or not. In some cases it probably is, but it's going to be really hard to see that, that there's an exchange going on and that their needs are getting met. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and the other, the other part that comes up for it too is that, um, and then the resentment when a part that gets really resentment, resentful when either the need, they have, they have their own need that doesn't, like other people then don't help them because they help people so much. And so why don't I get help back? I mean, then there can be parts that have a lot of resentment about that. Yeah. Um, and um, that's exactly right. Um, what you also have seen, I have seen, is a situation where somebody is a two and they expect that the rest of us can see our needs the way they can see. Yes, them. right. We can, and right. They can, they're just upset that we haven't seen and met um, yeah. because if it was them, they would see it. So there's where, you know, the difference between the perspectives one type to the other yeah. is really clear, yeah. really, really clear. Good. So good. What um, about the four? Okay. Um, the four, uh, the focus of attention of the four, this is a little different. Um, the fours tend to see, uh, it's a little funny, what's missing, what's not there rather than what is there. So, um, and they tend to value sometimes, or oftentimes, what's missing over what is actually present. Let me see if I can. Uh, think of an example. Um, for some reason, I'm, I'm not pulling one up right this minute, but um, the, let's say that it's um, in a work situation. You might have a four on your team um, who gets overly focused on a piece of the project that hasn't been addressed, even if it isn't a super important piece but they're gonna notice immediately that it's not there. Um, And it's gonna seem really important to attend to it. Mm. Um, That can be a real talent. You you know, you can get some troubleshooting out of it. Um, It also can be a real slowdown because sometimes focus on that missing um, blocks out focus on what's actually present in front of us. And I think fours do that with their lives. So tell me if this is right. I think fours also do that sort of with their lives instead of like focusing on what is here, what's present, what's good, what's going well, what's going on well with me, my job, my relationships, whatever. There is this focus on what is not here, what I'm missing. Yes, that's exactly right. So, so what's going on, I think underneath, if we put the IFS piece to this, is that there are some parts in there um, that just are, really, and you hear this word from fours a lot, are longing for something that they don't have. And that longing in the parts blocks out any sight of what actually is there or or uh, possible. Um, There's a behavior that we sometimes see in fours or oftentimes see in fours in relationship that we've labeled um, push-pull. And this uh, missing piece. So it's, you know, you're in connection with somebody and connection's really important to all heart types. Um, and they get really close and they don't look so good anymore because you notice what is not there that you really wanted. And, and that's the, that's the, um, the trigger for the parts to push that person away. And you'll often see that and they push them and the further away the person gets, the better they start to look. And then you've got the pull. You want to pull them Come back. back. <laughs> the yeah. thing that happens is the focus shifts from what's missing in that person to as they, as they back away, the focus goes to what am I, the four now missing because they left. Yeah, that's good. I love that. The fantasy comes in for the four too, right? So if, I, mean, I wonder if that's part of what's missing is then sort of the fantasy or the longing of what could be. And, um, and then when they get too close, you're like, well, the fantasy isn't, I've heard this about vacations, right? Like, like a four fantasizing about what a vacation is going to look like. And then when the reality happens, it's like, eh. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you actually have pulled an example that that um, sometimes gets people to think that fours and sevens can be very alike, even though they're in in, in a lot of ways diametric opposites. Um, uh, the word, uh, you use the word fantasy, and I love that. Um, the other word that you often hear talking about for us is idealization. Mm, because mm-hmm. they form a very clear picture of what an ideal would be. Um, and um, in a way that the rest of us can't, and, and really focus on it and feel and see um, what it could be. Yeah. Um, and then it's very hard to measure up to that kind of a vision or an ideal um, if you're not a four. Yeah. Um, So there are parts in there, you know, that are supporting all of those, um, all of those pieces. Yeah. I mean, I think when we always ask this a part, so what's coming up for me for the four specifically is like, you know, asking those parts, what are they afraid would happen if they did just rest in what's happening in the present or just really appreciate or be, you know, have some gratitude Um, or some acceptance for what is happening right now, whether it's the relationship or the connection or the, the trip or whatever. Um, And asking those parts, what are they afraid would happen if they did that without the longing? I think it would be really interesting to hear, to hear what parts would say. Yeah. I think that's one of the places we want to go. Um, You can probably, the listeners can probably tell that we've had more, um, more examples of twos and threes so far in our study um, who can offer us information about the parts they find in themselves. We've had a number of fours in our groups, um, but um, they tend to be on the more introverted side and, and tend to be a little less, um, less descriptive sometimes. So I, I think, uh, you know, we'll put that on the list. Is yeah, my wife's going to ask them. <laughs> Well, and I can ask my own, you know, I have that, my four wing is coming out big time these days. So I definitely can check inside about my own four. And uh, yeah, and we can just use that as an exploration with us, with me and yeah. with the with the um, people in our group, um, too, for sure. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about the Heart Center before we end today? Um, no, I, the only thing that I would point out is that um, what does happen when um, the heart center is your primary center is that you do develop an emotional sensitivity. Um, and most people who are twos, threes, and fours know that. Um, and that's something that, that the heart types can teach the rest of us. Because as mm. I said, it has all three centers. It's just some people are familiar or all people are more familiar with one over the other two. Um, So that sensitivity is something that, that we can be educated to. And, and I would also, if you are working with, or in, in relationship with a heart type, you want to be aware that their emotions and their image are super important to them. So I was working with a group yesterday and we were uh, teaching feedback actually and somebody in the group who I'm pretty sure was a heart type spoke up and said, you know, I can hear almost any kind of feedback as long as it's not given to me publicly, as long as it's delivered in private, because then I don't have to worry about what other people will think. And I thought, great example of, of a heart type. I don't know what this person was because I didn't have enough you know, inter- interaction with her to know. But there it was. Yeah, don't that's good. me yeah. other people because that's going to get into my image. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to tap into some shame, right? My part, my parts that feel shame uh, immediately are going to, yeah, going to be up. Yeah, yeah. and that's going to be that's going to be true across all three of these types. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for that. Well, again, another really fun conversation. Um, I'm so glad to talk to you. I'm sorry that neither of us feels particularly well today, but I hope that. I hope that we pulled enough uh, of interest to other people out of our uh, craziness. Our ramblings. Yeah, I I hope so, too. And it was fun as always. And I will see you next time. Okay, great. Bye. Bye. Thanks for hanging out today. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe. And if you really like this episode, share it with a friend and leave a review. You can follow me on Instagram at IFSTammy. 
and join our community on Facebook at the One Inside Podcast. Talk to you next time.